Today, we're going to be building Pip from the Acolyte. I'll be using Rage Prince files for my build. I literally started this project a couple of hours after the files were released, so they are a very early version that may change by the time you're watching this video. Because Pip isn't a very large droid, I decided on resin printing the entire thing to save myself on post-processing work. These pieces should all pretty much come off of the printer paint ready after I've properly cleaned and cured them. I was very excited about finally working on this droid, so I split up and sliced the parts for multiple resin printers so that they could all be printing at the same time to get this droid printed in record time. Which worked, I had a fully printed droid by the time I woke up the next day. I wanted the pieces to be more durable, so I mixed in about 50% of this tough resin with various ABS-like resins that I've been using up. I also printed the more mechanical parts in 100% Soraya Tech Blue so that they were even more durable and flexible. Once everything was printed, it was time to start properly cleaning these pieces. All of these parts were looking super awesome even at this stage, but there's a decent amount of support material that I have to deal with first before continuing on with this build. The tough resin added quite a lot of flexibility to these pieces, so a lot of them were really easy to remove the supports from. With the more delicate pieces though, I still used my heat gun pen to heat up and soften the support so that they remove easier and cleaner. After that, it was just curing everything. I used my handheld UV light to cure some of the more delicate parts just so that I didn't accidentally over cure them in the machine. And I just wanted to show in this clip here how flexible I got these parts to be so they're going to be really nice and durable for this droid. The only thing I did in terms of more traditional post-processing was file down the areas where there was more support material so on a lot of these parts it was really just the back of the pieces. Nothing that was super visible but I wanted to make sure it was nice and flat for when I go to assemble the parts together. And from there, it was right on to painting. I decided to start with the metallic areas first because they are more of a multi-step process, at least the way that I like to paint them. Of course, starting off with my Alclad gloss black base that I'm sure you're sick of seeing me use in pretty much every single video I make but it really is just the best base to use if you want super realistic metallic pieces. And of course, we've got to follow that up with some at Duralume and Tough. I do end up letting the gloss black base dry overnight, typically. That is like the last thing I do before going to bed, and then in the morning, I'm ready to start the metallic process, because after spraying everything that I want done with the Duralume, I do spray it once again with the Aqua Gloss, partially to protect the metallic, but it also works as a barrier so that I can more easily paint on top top of it. Especially in this case, since a few of these pieces are also going to be getting sprayed with acrylic paint as well. But before we can get onto that, we have to first prime the rest of these pieces with a more standard base primer. I'm using black because you can see on Pip's body, the scratching of the paint reveals a black layer underneath. So even though I would not normally use black underneath such vibrant colors because it's going to essentially make painting those colors a whole lot harder, for the sake of screen accuracy, it's got to be black other than the faceplate, which I did prime in gray. I started with the orange, which try as I may, I could not find an exact color. I've been gradually trying to build up my paint collection by buying individual colors every time a new project comes up. Well, airbrush paint specifically, and it also works well because it means I can buy the exact color or as close to the exact color as I actually need, which I know a whole lot of you appreciate because it seems every time I mix a custom color and one you can't just go out and buy, there's a decent amount of you that want to murder me. But I'm really trying, guys. Now, this actually took like three or four layers to get this orange built up, and once I'd let that dry for a bit, it was time to mask off pretty much all of these orange parts so that we can then go ahead and paint the turquoise nice light blue color, which thankfully this time I was able to find a much closer match, although I did find the Russian AF blue color, which was the darker one, to be a bit too dark by my color estimates and reference photos, which I should also mention at this point were quite limited. So this was my best guesstimate. There was thankfully a pretty decent look at the front of Pip, especially from the standee and other promotional material, but the back was just basically a guess. I'm sure that it will be one of those things that there will be an increase of information and reference come out in the future. So again, keep that in mind that I am building this quite early on, so I could be unintentionally
certainly doing some inaccuracies with this paint job, but for the limited reference that I currently have, I think I'm doing a pretty okay job. Again, that blue did take a couple of layers to really build up the color to full opacity, but once that is dried, it was time to remove all of the masking tape on the parts. The masking process really isn't that bad for this droid since for the most part, it's the various layers of panels that are the different colors. So you can pretty easily just butt up your masking tape to the edge of the panels. The head was pretty tedious though, and it's a combination of it's one of the smallest pieces and it also has the most color changes on it. But after removing all of that masking tape, it's time to start masking even more pieces because there are some very specific stripes that are on the front of Pip. I used a combination of thicker and thinner masking tape and even used that to help me align the stripe correctly since the space in between the two stripes looked like it was about equal to the smaller of the stripes. And I also added a little bit of masking fluid to make that specific chipped paint effect, which I did try and copy exactly using this little fine point bottle that I always have masking fluid in. The stripe itself looks like it's this really dark burgundy color. I actually mixed that red with black and not that gray to get this dark tone. I only did one quick pass of the color and then after it had dried, removed the masking tape and masking fluid. From there, it was a lot of hand painting because I got really sick of constantly having to mask everything off. So started with painting this really dark blue color around the window panes. I did a semi-gloss black on this side knob and then I did some metallic little accents. This was on the bottom of his head and then there were all of the symbols. So these buttons I just freehanded with this light gray color. It's really hard to tell if these symbols are in a silver or just like a flat gray. I went with the flat gray just so that there was a little bit of difference in texture with the paint job. And specifically on these buttons, they looked really worn. So I didn't want to go straight in with white, but I should have used white on these symbols because this gray was not light enough to to go with this orange. It was the same gray that I used for the other symbols, so I just ended up painting over it using some white to give it a more like interesting decal effect because that really is what these like stickers or symbols look like on Pip's body, especially this one. It is actually the same symbol that is on the training helmet that Luke wears in A New Hope, just in a slightly different color. And because these do look like worn decals, they are very difficult to paint and get that same effect. So I did try. I went with various light grays. I really watered down the paint that it was like almost watercolor looking to try and build it up in like a blotchy effect that looked like it had been something that was there and was gradually wearing off. I then started to add in some white because it does look like this was originally like a white colored sticker or something. It still has that drop shadow on the symbol. So I had to add that. And then I sort of just went back and forth with a really mangy brush and then just full-blown pieces of paper towel to create a blotchy textured effect that hopefully comes across as like a worn off decal. I even added some more orange back into the symbol to make it look like that paint color was coming through. And other than the weathering, that was it for paint. First, I wanted to put this droid together more though. Because this file is going to be compatible with animatronics in the future, there are a few real pieces of hardware that hold various parts together, which I did still use because genuinely Pip looks like he should have those hardware parts on his body. But this particular one has the ball joint mechanism, which was really cool and did actually work very well. And I'm happy that my resin pieces did in fact hold up. Same thing goes with this side knob. It turns really nicely. It did add a lot of weight to that side of the head. So if I were to remake it, I would either hollow out the part more or make it out of something a lot lighter than resin. The majority of a assembly that I had to do was gluing on all of these side panels, which I suppose you could have done beforehand, but it was a lot easier to paint them by keeping them separate. And for this, I just used good old super glue on everything. Once all of the panels and buttons were assembled onto the sides of the body, the last part of assembly was attaching the upper and lower portions of the body together with some grub screws. 
And here's what all of those parts look like put together. As for finishing the head assembly, the first thing I had to tackle was the electronics. While this particular build isn't going to be a full animatronic pip, I think we can handle adding some LED lights in to really bring this droid to life. I used a combination of three millimeter and five millimeter diodes. The three millimeter LEDs are the yellow and red ones that you can find on the front of Pip's face and they fit perfectly into those holes. And the five millimeter LEDs I used to construct the light panels to give them a nice even light. And all of those are just normal white LEDs. I used six of the five millimeter LEDs in total to make the nice even lighting for the panels. I had to do three groups of two because I couldn't fit a nine volt battery into his head. So I had to stick with the coin battery packs, which are only six volts. And these particular LEDs are very particular and like you cannot run them on less voltage if you wanted to. So four groups of two LEDs each run in parallel it is. Listen, I'm no electrician. I barely managed to make things work, which thankfully this time it did. Once I had everything wired up, I added this piece of LED foam behind the light panel so that I could more evenly diffuse these lights, which I just hot glued on unceremoniously to the back of this. I tried to keep them as evenly placed apart so that it would be a nice even light. Also glued the smaller red and yellow LEDs into place. And from there, I could start working on the proper hookup of all of these wires since right now I just left them all long and loose so that I had some wiggle room to work with, but it is a very tight space. So I did trim them down and it was such a tight space that I really couldn't film the exact final hookup, but this is what we're working with. A little crazy looking, but I'm happy to say it does in fact work. And I was really happy that I got to run both of the groups of lights off of this one switch, which I did specifically want to add because I realized I could glue it in right at the neck here, which means I can turn it on and off super easily without having to disassemble this entire droid's head every time I want to turn his little lights on. The final step for this was shoving all of these wires and electronics into this head, or at least attempting to. And the last finishing touch was adding the antenna, which I made out of a piece of wire and an M3 nut. But the true final step was weathering. I wanted this droid to be all together and weather it all at the same time so that the weathering was really cohesive across the entire body and head. So I started off by actually scuffing the paint up with this steel wool sponge situation and then went in even further with some really fine tweezers to make very specific scratches into the paint. Next, I added some of my black wash, which I really focused into the panel recesses and any of the panel creases, like where the turquoise and orange meet. And there's that groove right there. It's just where dirt would naturally build up. And you can see on the reference photos of Pip that it is quite black around those areas. And of course, just in general, I went around and gave a decent black wash to the recessed areas so that this droid looked like it really came straight off of a Star Wars set. Pip really does have a lot of hands-on mechanical functions, so you don't want him to look too clean, especially with how his body's designed. It does really have a lot of areas where grime can just build up and create those darker zones. So I would say I did probably 90% of the weathering just with the black wash, but I did decide to go in with a bit of black acrylic paint to just build up that grime around some of the panels a bit more so that it looked more like dirt buildup. Once I'd finished with the weathering, the final step was turning on the LEDs and attaching the head to the rest of the body. And here is my finished Pip Droid. This was such a fun project to make in totally only took me about three days from when I first started printing the pieces to when I finished. So really not a lengthy project and you get an adorable little droid at the end of it. But that is everything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.